Inmates, how is life behind bars? No, not these bars, but these bars. Happy New Year to you as well. This is the first video that we're bringing to you in 2023. So do you remember last summer, I bought this new Triumph Tiger, had it delivered. Like a lot of you who are out there buying your brand new bikes, you're out there riding it straight away, not me. First thing we did is we stripped it down, we took everything off, we took the fuel tank off, we got right in there, we got the founder of Hex here. Hex is the company that make the Easy Can, we wanted to get the Easy Can ready for the Triumph Tiger. I can tell you right now, that this has got an Easy Can on here, it's been operating with an Easy Can on here for several months, but the actual Easy Can isn't fully launched just yet. Hex made an announcement late last year, November, December of 2022, saying that the Easy Can is imminent, it's about to be released, it's definitely coming. I don't actually know that official date that it's gonna be released, but I have got to get this video content made because we've got so many more things happening throughout 2023 and just need to get this one out there, out the can, and out to you. If you know what the Easy Can is, then great. If you don't, carry on listening and you're gonna find out all about why you may need the Easy Can on your new Triumph Tiger. But those of you who know what the Easy Can is and know what you're gonna get from it, well then just hold tight. The day that we are filming this video, which is early January, it's actually not officially released, but it is coming towards the end of January maybe early February, so just keep an eye on the website. Once you see that Triumph Easy Cam for the Tiger 1200 is officially released on our website, well then you know you can buy it. Now we are taking pre-orders for it now, so if you want to go ahead and buy it, you can. You can also go ahead and buy pre-made bundles for your Triumph 1200 as well, so we've got them ready on the website. Now those of you who have got the Triumph 900, I can't officially confirm that this is gonna work on the 900. I know that it will be. I'm not allowed to officially confirm that th this is gonna work for the 900 straight away. It may be shortly afterwards, okay? I think they've got a few little things that they need to iron out back at Hex head office. For those of you who have no idea what an easy can is, well then I need to quickly update those of you watching right now who need to know what that is. So your bike, if you've got a Triumph Tiger or a, any modern bike like a Ducati V4S, a Husqvarna Norden 901, a BMW GS, a KTM Super Adventure S, anything like that, well then your bike doesn't just work off a simple 12 volt system like the old bikes used to do. So back in the olden days, we used to be able to just splice in a pair of lights to our bike and it'll work absolutely fine. Whereas today, we have a network on our bike, which is called a canvas. So instead of when you indicate on your bike, you're not actually telling your light bulb to flash. You are telling the computer on your bike to tell the light bulb to flash left when you indicate left. If you wanted to put a set of headlights, extra headlights on your bike, and you try and splice into that network, the computer's just gonna basically say, no, we're not doing this for you. And you get canvas errors all over the screen of your dash. Not only that, if you try and even do this, you are under massive risk of voiding your warranty on your brand new, very expensive adventure bike. So what does the Easy Can do? Some of you may have heard of the CanSmart. So Denali have the CanSmart controller, Hex have the Easy Can controller. They are the same product. Now I made a video about that getting on for two years ago now, explaining that the CanSmart, the Denali CanSmart is the Hex Easy Can. Hex white labeled their Easy Can to Denali and Denali rebranded it the CanSmart. So some of you will be more familiar with the CanSmart and some of you will be more familiar with the Easy Can, but they're the same product and they're both made in the same factory. It's just that one has got a different paint job as the other. Also, the Hex Easy Can has a very, very nice premium wiring harness kit that I personally love installing on the bikes. Whereas the Denali CanSmart comes with a very good wiring harness kit, but just in my personal opinion, it's just not up there with the Hex Easy Can wiring harness kit. However, I have heard they are looking to upgrade that this year. So the whole thing is, is the Easy Can plugs in to the bikes canvas. Now on the BMW GS's and the RT, it plugs into the tire pressure system. On a KTM, it goes directly into the diagnostic port. On some bikes, it goes into the alarm system. Now on the Triumph Tiger, we had this apart. We've had this apart many, many times, trying to look for the most 
convenient plug on this bike so you as a customer can just take the seat off and plug it in. They've decided to put the majority of the plugs that we need to access so deep under the petrol tank, it's not really convenient to you as a customer to be taking everything apart just to plug an easy can in. So we've had to go in through the 16 pin OBD connector. So when your Triumph Easy Can arrives with you, you simply unbox it, plug it into the 16 pin OBD connector and full instructions will come with the Easy Can showing you exactly how to do that. And then you connect it directly to your battery as well. Once you've done that, you've then got four circuits to play with to do whatever the hell you like with. And I'm gonna show you what we've done to my Triumph Tiger. So the beauty of the Easy Can is when you press your horn on your bike, the canvas on your bike knows you've pressed the horn. So if you've got a high powered sound bomb fitted to your bike, well then we can instruct the Easy Can to power that sound bomb. Does that make sense? As you can see on my bike, I've had two D3 spots at the top, which I only want for full beam. So when we turn the bike on, I don't want them coming on with the DRL. I don't want them coming on with the main headlights. I only want them for full beam. So when I plug these two spotlights into one circuit on my Easy Can as a pair, I've got them programmed to only come on when I hit full beam because the canvas knows when I flick full beam on, well then the Easy Can reads that and it knows it's got a circuit that is programmed to be set up to only come on when full beam comes on. And I can program that intensity from 100% down to 50%, 20% as I want, but obviously it's full beam. So I have it at 100% of course. And later on in this video, I'll show you the actual programming so you can actually see how we've programmed the bike as well. So apologies, this might be a bit of a lengthy video, but there's a lot to take on board. The next thing I put onto my Easy Can are the Amber D3s. Now, because I've got two Amber D3s, I want them to flash when I indicate. And I also want them to be a DRL, just as I'm riding along during the daytime and nighttime. Now, because I want them to do something independent from each other, because I want the left one to flash, but not the right one when I indicate left, and I want the right one to flash, but the left one not to flash when I indicate right, hope you're keeping up. Well, then I have to put them on two circuits on the Easy Can, but then I pair them in the software, which I'll show you later on, how they become a light pair. So they are light pair two, but across two circuits on the Easy Can. So already, we're already getting up to four circuits. So we've got one circuit for the D3s, because I've used a Y splitter to put them into one circuit, and I've used two circuits for my Amber D3s. And I've used one circuit for my sound bomb, but I've also got a rear light on the back. So there's five circuits. The Easy Can's only got four circuits. So then what I've had to do is take my sound bomb off the Easy Can and wire it up to its own sound bomb harness. Now I'll show you all these components on the website and there'll be a link down below directly to the basket showing you exactly what bundle is on this bike and you know, what needs to be purchased. So if you like this bundle, you can literally purchase this from the link down below and it'll take you straight through to that respective shopping basket. Now, a lot of people will then think, oh, if you've taken the sound bomb off the Easy Can, will my lights still flicker and strobe when I hit the horn? The answer is yes, it will, because it's not the horn, it's not the sound bomb that makes your light strobe. It's the Easy Can that makes your light strobe. Just because there's not a sound bomb on your Easy Can, doesn't mean the Easy Can doesn't know when you're pressing that horn button because the horn is on the canvas of the bike. Hope you're catching up. And I really don't mean to sound patronizing at all. It's just I've been doing this for years and I get questions every day about how these Easy Cans work. So I hope you appreciate what I'm trying to say and what I'm trying to do. And then finally, I've put that rear B6 on the back of the bike and put that into the fourth circuit. Some of you may be thinking, well, why can't you put the front D3s direct to the bike for a relay? Why can't you put the rear B6 direct to the bike for a relay? Well, you can. You can do that if you really want to. If you really didn't like this whole system setup, we also do a product that Denali make called the Dialed In. And you can have this whole configuration on your bike with a dial actually on your handlebar and you can control both the light pairs. The only difference is with the dial dim is that it doesn't read canvas information so it can't read things like the speed you're going. It also can't uh, function a rear light. It can only do front lights. It's a very good product 
but there's just things that it can't do because it hasn't got that canvas info coming into the product. Whereas EasyCan knows everything your bike is doing. It knows exactly what speed you were doing at 2.30 p.m. yesterday afternoon. It, it just knows everything. So because it has all that data, it, we can program it to do things. So with the rear light, for instance, we can program that to flash when we do an emergency stop. And we can program the intensity of that emergency braking. So if we're braking relatively hard, but not really hard, well, maybe we don't want that rear B6 to be flashing in an emergency stop way. But if you're really squeezing that brake really, really hard, well, then you want that rear light to be flashing. And also engine braking. You may not be touching your brakes at all, but you're coming down through those gears rapidly on that mountain pass and your bike is slowing down much faster than the car behind you because you're so much lighter. And because you're slowing down without your brakes, maybe you want to let that car behind you know that you actually are slowing down rapidly, but through engine braking. So then we can program that B6 to flash as you're slowing down because the canvas is picking up all of that information of how fast and how much you are slowing down through the gears. So if you look at this bit of footage from last year, you'll see me leaving the, the property here, going out on the bike, all the fairings off. I'm literally plugged into the bike with all of the test equipment from Hex. I've got a GoPro on my chest and uh, we're basically going out there just picking up lots and lots of data, going around the block several times at different speeds applying the brakes at certain times just so we can collect that data so we can create this easy can for you. Now it's important to note that this is the Triumph Tiger 1200 Explorer. It's not the GT, the GT Pro. I keep getting confused with the models now. It's the Rally Explorer. So we've got the bigger front wheel on here, but this easy can will work on all 1200 Triumphs. So it doesn't matter which one you've got, it'll work. But the only differences between the Explorer and some of the other Triumphs, crash bar configurations. Currently, there is no bike specific light mount for any of the Tigers. So what I've done, because I've got the Explorer, I've got the full crash bar upper and lower. I've fitted my D3 spots up here using a universal crash bar mount, which we have on stock here from Denali. And then with the, the D3 fogs down here, we've actually had to fabricate our own little mount using some old, well, I wouldn't say they're old, but we use some camera mounts for the K3 and the K5, which we just had lying around. So uh, apologies, I, I can't supply you that light mount, but I'm sure something will come out in the very near future like an adapter. So if you want to take off your OEM fog lights that Triumphs have supplied with your bike, well then you're gonna be left with this mounting point which is not compatible with any other light. So an adapter does need to be made. You know, we're still in the early days. I'm sure we'll get an adapter in the next few months so you can mount lights in that same position. But currently at the moment, we've just used a bit of our noddle, come up with a couple of L-shaped cl uh, clamps put them around each side and fist it to the D3. It works absolutely great. Now I've done 3000 miles on this bike, right through France, down into Corsica, which is a beautiful, it's, no, it's not Italian island, that's Sardinia. Beautiful French island off the south coast of Italy called Corsica. What a fantastic bike. This Triumph Tiger, it's a really, all I'm gonna say, it's a really good attempt at being better than the GS. When I first got this bike, I gotta be honest, I absolutely fell in love with it and I still love it today. And when it goes, because it will go, I'm gonna miss that engine. The engine on this is phenomenal. It's, it just sings to you. And a lot of people are asking me, you know, do you prefer it to the GS? And at first I did, I thought I did, but then I jumped back on the GS. And I, I thought, what am I talking about? The GS is so much better. If you've got a GS and you get rid of your GS, and a lot of you will know that I have a GS as well, but if you have a GS and you sell your GS and you replace it with this, you will not be disappointed. You will be very happy with it and you will be convinced this is a better bike. So in that respect, that's okay, isn't it? I think that's okay. It sings to you that the, the, the exhaust notes, the engine tone is just sublime. It's, it's a good bike. Looking back at the sound bomb, there, there's no bike specific mount for the sound bomb either. So when we get new bikes in and we don't know where we're gonna put that sound bomb, we have options. We can either fit the compact sound bomb or the split sound bomb. And I thought I was going to need to put a split sound bomb on, on this, just like we do with the KTM when you have the lower crash bars on there. But we managed to find a place 
on the left hand side on the clutch side of the bike behind the fairing of the explorer where we've used a crash bar mount specifically for the horn and we list those on the website don't forget if you buy this as a bundle we automatically supply that horn mount if you select the sound bomb for this particular bike so towards the end of this video if you want if you're interested in the programming exactly how we program all these lights up so they do exactly what we want them to do then stay tuned but let's also walk you around the rest of the bike showing you what else i've put on the bike so i'd like to draw your attention to the k3 the inov k3 camera that i put on here maybe you can see it just inside the front of the nose so i thought that was a perfect placement on this bike it fits in there an absolute treat it has a really really clear view of the road you can't really see any of the other headlights or of the beak as you're going along it hides it nicely and generally people need to be pointed out exactly what it is and the amount of people who have looked at it and said is that a front radar i side slung the rear camera on the clutch side of the bike as well towards the back um, i think it's on the indicator isn't it and then if you look at the back you've got the k3 dvr under the back one thing to point out you notice in the back of the the triumphs you get to one of these phone holders uh, i think well i think it's a phone holder where you can put your phone in here and you can charge it up so we've had to remove this because I don't want my phone under my rear seat anyway, but we've actually had to remove this to make the space for the camera and the easy can. I'm not saying you have to remove this. I think we could have got away with it, but we've put a little bit more on the bike than just an easy can. So if you're wanting to fit a bit more to your bike, let's say an amp link PDM as well, well then you're gonna have to take this out. So you just unplug this and um, stick this in the cupboard. So as you're looking down the back of the bike inside, you can see the easy can, you can see the DVR, you can see the microphone for the K3 as well. And you can also see the DC converter, the little blue light under the seat, that's the DC converter for the K3 as well. So there's not a lot of space to be working around inside of this bike, but as you're taking the bike apart and you've got the rear seats off, you'll notice it's, it's, it's actually quite easy to lay all the harnesses out. And another point, which is very interesting, even though we've had this bike fully stripped down with the fuel tank out and everything, you don't actually need to take that fuel tank out at all. We haven't rooted any wires under this petrol tank. So you, so you don't need to. The way how the panels are aligned on the side of the bike, we have lots of space behind there to actually hide all of the harnesses that go through to the front of the bike, because you can't see any at all. You can see one zip tie on the far side which maybe we didn't even need to fit that. But it, it's a very, very tidy, extremely tidy installation without taking the petrol tank off. So it shouldn't take you too long to fit a full Denali Easy Can system on your bike. And not forgetting the remote control up on the left-hand side so we can see that the camera's working. If you don't know anything about the, the K3 system, you've got a little silver button on there which you can press once to take a picture or press two to earmark a video file. I may be wrong, it could be, it could be one press to, to earmark a video file and two presses to take a picture, I can't remember. But the whole, uh, the whole idea with the dash cam is as soon as you turn your bike on, it starts recording straight away. So the next thing I want to draw your attention to is the Evotech part. So we are stocking lots of Evotech here for many adventure bikes. So for this one, I wanted to put the Evotech front slider set on here and I wanted to put the Evotech rear slider set on as well. And you'll see I've got a protection bung on the side swing arm too. When I went down to Corsica and did the 3000 miles on this, I used my phone for all my satellite navigation. So for me, it was all about putting my peak design case, my peak design mount actually on the bike. And I incorporated that with the Evotech GPS phone mounts that you see going up the front of the, the screen. So we stock those here as well. So the whole idea of that is, is you buy the Triumph Explorer Evotech phone mount, which goes up the screen, and you buy one of the vibration damping peak design phone mounts and the respective phone mount for your phone. And then you put that all together on the bike like I've done here and we automatically have a very very good phone mount for your triumph tiger so i'm going to go and grab my camera look look how easy this peak design thing is you just go to it obviously it won't come off you just press the back and it's off and when i'm done whack it back on again can you imagine if i had a quad lock right now i wouldn't get it on because the screen's in the way all right okay 
Now you might notice I've also got an SW Motec tank ring on the bike. And at a later date, we are gonna bring a video to you showing you all of the tank bag ranges that fits the Triumph Tiger Explorer. So very sorry, this is a long video, but like I said, there's a lot of content going on here and I'm sure a lot of you with Triumph Tigers will appreciate this much content that there is to talk about your, your new bike. Also stay tuned for the Norden 901. We've got the Easy Can working on Husqvarna Norden 901. Tom works here, he's got that on his bike. Also the Tenere 700 with that Easy Can is coming shortly. And also the Ducati V4S, I think possibly the V2S, not, don't quote me on that one. And also the Ducati Desert X, which I'm very excited about and hoping to get one of those in here actually. Fingers crossed on that. Please leave a comment down below. It's not just for me to read, it's for all the other subscribers and viewers to read as well. Keep that stuff coming in guys and uh, leave us a like. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Like I say, this year there's a lot of things happening, which I can't talk about just yet, but I'm really excited about all of it. So apologies for the lighting suddenly changing. I've just spent quite a bit of time setting up the camera so we get the optimal lighting so you can see what I'm doing as I'm programming the lights, you'll see the lights coming on on the bike. Right, now I need to record my screen. So all I've done here is plugged in the Easy Can. I've done the registration process. I'm not gonna show that on here, but um, once you plug it in and it's all registered, you will see all of your lights on here, all, all of the circuits on here of which you can program. Now, we've already set this up on here, uh, but I'll go through it all with you. So first thing to do is I'm gonna go up here and just click on this little um, hazard triangle at the top. What this does is it opens up a diagnostic window and I can test every circuit. So let's say, for instance, you have no idea what you've plugged into what, but what we can do here is we can slide these sliders and it will show us what does what. So if I slide up the red, you'll see on the camera that the, the D3 spots are coming on. Now we've, as I mentioned, we've wired these D3 spots into one circuit because I don't care about them turning off on the respective side when we indicate. So the red circuit is the D3 spots. The blue circuit is my left D3 fog, amber D3 fog. Uh, the white, the yellow circuit, you can't see it on here, but I can see it at the back. My brake light is coming on. So my B6 light is powering up. And the white circuit is my right D3 fog. So now I know exactly how to set all of this up. Now, looking at the, the top part of the screen now, as you can see, we've set the red circuit up to be light pair one. So this is my D3 spots. If I wanted to, I could call it light pair two, um, but we're gonna call it light pair one, auxiliary light pair one, hit apply. And then we've got the blue, which we've got as left light two. We don't wanna call it left light one because that will get confused with the other set of lights. It's important to know that if you've got two lights making up a pair of lights wired across two circuits, you have to call one light left light two and one of the lights right light two or left light one and right light one so it makes a pair. So if I come out of this, you can see the blue is the left light two and the white is the right light two. It doesn't matter, we could have put the, 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 the the left light two on the red, we could have put the, the right light two on the yellow, for instance, but these are the ones that they're plugged into, so this is how we're gonna program it. We've also set the amps. So when it comes out of the box, it will have a default set of, amp, uh, set of amps. If that was on one amp or two amps, as soon as you turn that light on, it will trip. So we must make sure it's on the correct amount of amps based on the light pod that you are wire, wiring up. We've got light pair one on 10 amps because that's a pair of lights. We've got two lights going down one circuit. So we don't want to overload that circuit. It might be okay on 7.5 amps, but I think it'd be safer if we set it to 10 amps. Um, and then we've got the yellow circuit here, uh, which is the brake light. We, we, we've selected four amps, but we probably could take that down to three amps. Now, if I go back to the 
the diagnostic window and I max, max out this yellow circuit, if you look on here, it's showing the average amps it draws is 30, sorry, 0.36 amps. It's peaked at 0.88 amps, which means we should safely, we should be able to safely put this to one amp. But I'm gonna set it to two amps just to be on the safe side. Um, the white circuit, if we go to the white circuit and we max this one out, you can see it roughly draws around about three, just over three amps. It, it's peaked 8.54 amps. Uh, that's okay. The easy cam will tolerate peaking, but I think four amps is just spot on for that one. And then the blue circuit, if I put this one up, you can see that this is roughly running just under three amps again. So we've set that to four amps and the red circuit, this is running at under five amps. So I'm actually would be happier if we put that down to 7.5 amps and that will be fine. So that, they're all the lights set up. Now for light pair one, which we already know the D3 white spots, I don't want my lights to be on as a daytime running light, but I can turn them up if I want to. So for daytime and nighttime intensity, we can turn it up to let's say 20%. So if I turn the bike on now, you'll see that the, the D3 spots will come on at 20% dipped, but I don't want them on as a dip light. I want them off. I don't care about having them turning off when I use my turn signals because they're only ever going to be on when I've got full beam on. So I've got that turned off. When I hit my horn, I want them to strobe. When I flash the flasher four times, they are going to strobe. Um, and then I've got them also linked up to inverse flashing when the hazards are on. Modulation, I've got this turned off. If you turn modulation on, the lights will flicker when you are in daytime mode. Now with modulation, you can actually go to uh, info and extra settings over here. If I just bring that into the view. And on here, we can actually adjust the modulation variation less or more if you have it on. And all you're doing is you're telling your headlights to flicker during daytime hours to help you being noticed more. But for me personally, it just looks like there's a faulty light on your bike. Uh, I just don't like it. Right, so modulation is turned off. Three wire dimming is turned on because it's a three wide light. So we want to access that pulse width, width modulation, the PWM, or it was what Denali call it, the 2.0 data dim technology. So we are using three wire dimming. If you had a cheaper light pod on your bike, which is just two wire, well then you need to deactivate that so it works on two wire dimming. If you leave it like this, which hundreds of my customers do and they email me saying, why is my light um, flickering and it's not stable, it's because they forgot to activate three wire dimming. So make sure if you've got a high premium light pod, like a Denali light pod, that three wire dimming is turned on. The next set of lights, as you can see, is denoted by blue and white because we set up blue and white up here as left light and right light. So this is light pair two right here. So I've got my daytime settings for these amber lights. I've selected 100% for daytime and 50% for nighttime. So they're not too bright at nighttime. When I indicate, they will flash at 100%. And as you can see, I've got them here to flash. If, if there are white lights, I could tell them to turn off when I indicate, but we want them to flash. So that, so you must make sure you click on there to select flash and obviously have this turned on. Same again as the ones before. When I hit my horn, I want them to strobe. When I hit, when I flash my flasher four times, flash to pass, I want them to strobe as well. Um, so as you can see for dipped, I've, for, for daytime, they are at 100%, nice and bright, I can be seen, and for the nighttime, 50%. Full beam, I've got them coming on at 100%, so you're not gonna see any change. When I hit my flasher, you are not going to notice any change between the amber dipped and the amber full beam. I don't need that. And the same again for nighttime. When I flash my lights at nighttime, I don't want the amber lights to get brighter. I don't think that will look right. So I've actually said, when I hit the flasher at nighttime, it does exactly the same as the dips. So you won't see any change when I flash my lights 
on the amber lights. Inverse flashing with hazards, I don't want that. When I, when I hit my hazards, I want my, my new amber D3s to flash with the Triumph indicators. Modulation turned off, same as above. Three wide dimming is activated because they are premium Denali lights. Then for the rear light at the back, as you can see, we've got solid on braking. If you wanted to, we could, we could select flash on braking, but I don't want that. Or we could do California legal flashing, where it, it, when you hit the brake, it flashes a couple of times and it, then you get a solid brake. But for here in UK, I want solid on braking. I've activated my flash on emergency stop and I've activated the flash on rapid engine braking as well. So people will know that I am slowing down rapidly without going through my gears. I personally don't like to have a run light on my B6, uh, on, on, but either my GS or my Triumph. Uh, but if I wanted to, I could turn it up to 10% and I could have my brake lights at whatever intensity I want. The B6 is a very effective bright, bright light. I think 80% is bright enough for the actual brake light, but you can have it at 100% if you want. And I've got mine turned off. Okay, that is the programming done. Okay, so now we've got it all programmed up. Let me now show it to you actually working in full swing. So I'm going to turn the ignition on now. Now, as a lot of Triumph Tiger 1200 owners will know, when we turn the ignition on, the first thing that happens, because we are in DRL mode, that we get a low intensity coming out of this light just here. As soon as I flash my lights or, or turn the engine on it and turn it into dipped mode, this goes to a much brighter DRL mode, but this is in DRL mode. And as we programmed it, I've got my amber lights on only. When I indicate left, you can see I've programmed that as per the programming that is flashing along with my sequential Tiger indicators that I opted for when I bought the bike. And when I cancel the indicator, they come back on slowly. Now, if I indicated left and the, and the other side started flashing, all we need to do is just reprogram it back at the easy can, or if you wanted to unplug it at the back and swap the cables around, it's up to you. So if I indicate the other way, there we go, cancel. Now, as soon as I flash, we are in DRL mode. That, remember, this is gonna get brighter, so here we go. Now, if you notice, my D3 spots are now coming on as well. Yeah, so again, indicate, still doing the same, but we are in daytime DRL mode. Now, if I go into nighttime mode, this is now giving you the headlight that you need to project light down the road. For me personally, I still don't want my D3s coming on, my D3 spots, but you could do that. I've angled my D3s up a little bit more, so I get really good, effective nighttime riding when I've got my full beam on. But if I hit my flasher, you can see everything gets brighter. Now go back to DRL mode so we can see what we're doing. Now, remember I said if you flash the pass, flash four times on the Tiger, one, two, three, four, and then we've got the strobing like that. Now, the other interesting thing to point out is if you've got the stock OEM fog lights on your Tiger, well, they only come on when you are in full dipped driving mode, don't they? Whereas if you notice now, we've got them programmed through these again to stay on. So we've got them coming on in DRL mode as well, which a lot of us can't do. So that's gonna look so much better, the presence down the road, having the DRL light on and having the D3 fogs on as well. It's pretty cool. If we hit the horn now, remembering that you probably noticed that the horn wasn't on the easy can because we're using four circuits to run the rear lights two sets of lights so there's no space for the sound bomb on the easy can so we've wired the sound bomb up on its own harness with its own relay so it'll still work and we programmed the lights to still strobe so when i hit the horn get ready so loud <laughs> and as you notice the lights are strobing as well when we hit the horn so let's put the hazards on OK, 
okay so as per the programming I want I, I asked the d3s to alternate with the indicators so we get this alter, this alternating flash between the d3s and the the factory turn signals but I wanted the the amber d3s to not alternate so they match the actual indicators on the triumph let's cancel that off okay so we're going to turn the bike on as you can see it's powering up right now now if you look on the wall in the background you can see my amber lights are on and also if I just come around the front you can see the very low DRL light is on as well. Now if I flash my lights, you can see the, the D3 spots have come on and the amber lights are both on because I am in, uh, full, I'm in full driving beam, I'm in full driving mode, driving dipped light mode. If I take that down to the DRL mode, we're back down to here, okay. So right now, all you can see is the DRL mode and the amber light that is on. Now I've got my amber lights on light set, light set two, but if I want to turn these lights off, all I need to do, there they are, they're on light set two. All I need to do is press, press my turn signal cancel, TSC for short, press that three times. If you watch the amber light in the background, ready? One, two, three, and then they go off. Now if I press it three times again, one, two, three, they come back on again. Now, as you know, I've got my D3 spotlights, the white lights turned off right now. Well, they're not turned off, they're turned on, but they're at 0%. So let's uh, concentrate just on the amber light at the moment. So light set two, if I push down the joystick, this here, if I push this down for three seconds, I get that amber light there. So one, two, three three, four, there we go, we have a flash. So now I can mess around with the, the intensity by going up and down on the joystick. See, so if we go all the way to the top, we get 100%, but 90, 80, 70, 60, 50. That's where I want it at, 50%. Now, if I want to mess around with the, the D3 spotlights, that's light set one, I'm now gonna hold this up for three to four seconds. One, two, three, four, see the blink? That's zero percent, 10 percent, 20 percent, 30 percent, 40 percent, 50 percent, 60 percent. And bearing in mind, we are in DRL mode. So we're controlling all our fog lights in DRL mode. So that's back to off. If I go full beam, you can see my D3 spots on the wall. The light at the top is the Triumph light, and obviously the amber light is the amber light. So that is how we control our lights. And if I want to turn the D3 spots off, all I have to do is hold this in for three to four seconds. One, two, three, four. Now when I go and flash my lights, you can see the D3 spots have now gone off. It's just the amber lights with the Triumph headlights. So turn that back on again. One, two, three, four. Go to flash. And there they are, they've come back on again. So very sorry this is a long video, but like I said, there's a lot of content going on here and I'm sure a lot of you with Triumph Tigers will appreciate this much content that there is to talk about your, your new bike. Stay safe behind bars and I'll see you in the next video.